Well, uh, thanks very much for inviting me to this, uh, to this conference. Uh, it's a topic that's very close to my heart. I will uh, soon understand uh, that this is really true. I first said all of this is very short introduction to myself and to my work and how it is connected to uh, T. Uh, I have a background in T. I have a so my background is in the cultural statistics and after many years work with Shell, where I invented LinkedIn, which is true actually, in 1996. And, and, and uh, I tried to commercialize it, but I was too early. Great problem now. Too early is not in time. So when you arrive somewhere too late, you say, well, I have too early is also not in time. So in that respect, it's very difficult to be on time. Um, and then I, uh, of course, I had no money left. And there were still some children at home. I had to start doing something. I was in the I had to start working. Um, and I, I, I worked for Amen Amrobek. I have to remove myself. Okay. Do that if you push the uh, uh, Okay. Uh, so I started working for a number way. I remember well, I told a friend that uh, I'm going to work for a number. And he said, hey, but you were very good at school. So uh, my <laughs> banking world. Um, and and, and uh, at the end of the day, I ended up being the, uh, the head of innovation at a number way. My title there was the chief dialogue officer. And the chief dialogue officer was because I truly believe in working together like you do, especially around complex things like privacy. Uh, uh, so, working together is very important. This is also achieved many things. But most of all, this function did not exist. And that uh, sort of became uh, for a long time very unclear for my boss was. That was a very relaxed feeling. So, uh, but I had the opportunity to, uh, to work with fantastic people inside and outside a you know, way. Uh, I did a task uh, project with Marco from Boston, the football player, the project failed, by the way. Um, and, and, and actually, most of the projects we did failed. And one day I started to think about me. Is that because of me? And if that's true, then better pay me to stay at home, nobody was so. Or is it because of the things we're doing? It's very complex, it's still, it's multi dimensional. And one of these very important topics from my perspective was dealing with the and like I said, I happily work with uh, people outside the uh, and Actually, I built the uh, future center in Amro Bank, which was called Future uh, the Dialogue House. And the inspiration I got to the Dialogue House when I was making a tour through Europe, that's the northern part of Europe. And one of the people who joined me on that tour was Master This was in 2004. And then he already started talking to me about his dreams for a new internet where people were uh, <coughs> centered. No longer the visitors of the internet, we are co owners of the internet. We're not in a, uh, anonymous on the internet or, or, or objects, no, we are, we are subjects on the internet. He told me his dreams and I was fascinated. Anyway, um, so that's how I started to know T, but I will first uh, talk a little bit about this issue in Paris, because, like I said, most of the projects we did failed, mm -hmm. and I started thinking, what do we do with this? Does it mean that we have to give up? Or or is it just an extra motivation, inspiration to move on? With the knowledge we have accumulated during our time. Because it's not so And the, the problem is, we uh, usually, when we do hear stories, we always hear stories about things that went well. And if you go, for instance, to uh, Facebook, it has been proven. If you look at pictures that have been taken outdoor on Facebook, the sun is shining 40% more often than in the other. That's how we want to present ourselves, that's how we want to present actually uh, reality, but it's only part of the reality. Excuse me, I'm sorry for the online participants, but you can call the speaker. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I mean, uh, on which side does it matter? <laughs> Exterior, okay. <laughs> no. uh, can you please make pictures at home? Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, so uh, we usually want to tell each other this, uh, this uh, good stories and this, this positive stories, uh, and, and, but I want to tell the real stories. Next slide. I, I will make a little thing. Of it. So usually what you see is that this is more or less what we have in mind when we make a plan, uh, and, and we are on the left-hand side, and we move on, and then we are on the right-hand side. A couple of remarks here. First of all, this is extremely boring. Suppose these are your cycling holidays. No, I don't hope so. But most of all, and nothing's happening here. No new information, no knowledge, no new patterns. Uh, and, and you know, intelligence is connected to uh, pattern recognition. 
Think about artificial intelligence. Does it exist, by the way? Uh, artificial intelligence. I have an artificial plant at home. You know, why do I do have an artificial plant to replace a real plant? Because I cannot take off real plants. So now think about artificial intelligence. What's artificial about intelligence? Does it have to replace my intelligence? Now, maybe that's possible, but not for your intelligence. So let's agree that we will use the term AI as additional intelligence, augmented intelligence. And this is about pattern recognition. Uh, but there are no new patterns here. And why do I talk about why do I talk about patterns? Because I will talk about patterns in failing. I will increase your FI, your failure intelligence. Yeah. Uh, so we will talk about patterns. And when we learn new patterns, we build up new knowledge. If we create our own new patterns, we are creative. So no patterns here. And most of all, this is not statistic. Uh, this is the reality. Uh, and this is also the reality of people who are working on, on, on privacy issues, on, 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 on data-related uh, uh, projects. It's always full with obstacles. It's full with beautiful viewpoints. It's uh, full of, of uh, surprises. It's full of knowledge. Next, please. Uh, and, and, that not, uh, and that learning journey, that is what also, I think is the theme of this, this conference. It's the theme already for 15 years where we're dealing with data related issues we have to learn as fast as possible especially in a world that is changing fast uh, and, and uh, that's also why the word fail uh, actually is no word it's, it's an abbreviation it stands for first attempt in learning because if there's one way that we can learn is from the things that did not work out the way we anticipated and that's what we usually call failure next one yeah yeah you have to double roll now <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey hey wait a minute it works yeah, you're free today. Okay. <laughs> so uh, what I'm looking for is a new perspective on failure. And of course, I've seen many, many, many failures. Uh, I study failures. Uh, I, I, I wake up with failures and I go to bed with failures. Um, but, uh, and I can tell you, it's no fun. I see people, I see people who uh, lose their job. I see people losing money. They're losing their relationship, their health. I've seen all of it. So it's no fun. Uh, on the other hand, what I also see is a lot of beautiful people try to do their best to create something and uh, to make a better world and, and they learn and the learnings are very valuable. So if you look from that perspective, you see something else. In the same situation, but seen from a different perspective, you see something else. And that's what I would like to achieve in this uh, uh, little time that I have give, been given today, a new perspective on failure and a new perspective on key. Uh, so, uh, and, and, and what is that? It's because we, like I said, we are used to talk about the cost of failure, but if you look closely, there's a lot of value in failure, but you have to be open for it. I, I cannot change the cost of failure because it happened and, and, and yeah, you have to take your losses, but we can change ourselves the value of failure, be, be open for what we have learned, be open for new possibilities, be open for better relationships. And then I think we have to sell your failure. Now, there is a failure and a failure, uh, and I will talk about the difference of failures and brilliant failures. Let me see whether this uh, works. Uh, it's a little bit unstable, but now I need you again, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello. I thought it was a microphone, but I have to turn it out. <laughs> no. So uh, we did a study on, 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 uh, on people actually who went bankrupt. And later we just, uh, and, and you know, especially in this part of the world, when you uh, go bankrupt, you have really a problem. You, it's very difficult to be financed again. But we have interviewed many beautiful entrepreneurs who once had financial troubles and later became very successful. All of them stating my latest success was built on the knowledge that we have accumulated during my, the, the previous phase. Uh, can you go on the next one? Uh, and, and, um, and that's not only the Netherlands, actually there was a European research project it's called the Phoenix Project, and they have demonstrated that people who start a company for the second time after having had difficulties in the first time, on average, they're more successful than starters. And funny enough, we pay a lot of attention to people who start for the first time, but not so much to people who start for the second time. And that's strange because it has now been scientifically proven that that's probably a better bet to make. Next one. So we have also set up as the Institute of Brain Failures and a concept is called the, the Second Chance Office or the Second Chance Counter, where you can nominate yourself or other people with great projects 
that did not really work out the first time, but were so important that they got so much knowledge that probably it's very worthwhile to try it again. With the same people, with the same knowledge, other people with the same knowledge, doesn't matter. And there are a couple of projects in this uh, concept now, and they really moved on very quickly just by reusing the knowledge that has been developed in the first stage. Yeah, next one. So indeed, uh, uh, we talk about, uh, yeah, you can click, uh, yeah, uh, talk about brilliant failures. So what's the difference between a failure and a brilliant failure? A brilliant failure is something that you try with good reason, with very good intentions, you work hard, nevertheless, it gave another outcome that you anticipated, you were, you were hoping for, and you can learn a lot. Next one. But people have often ask me, yeah, but that's, that's not enough. Uh, here's a failure. Is it brilliant? Or how brilliant is my failure? And I developed a formula, that's what uh, theoretical like physicists do, uh, and I developed a formula so you can calculate how brilliant your failure was. And this formula is called the viral formula, and that's a coincidence. I was first, but this is about things that have to be reproduced with a reproduction factor larger than one. It's the good ideas, it's the energy, and the outcome is the less of learned. And these five factors stand for the vision. What are you trying to achieve? Is that something that the world is waiting for? The I is for the inspiration. The R is for the risk you take, and, and not too much risk, please, that's, uh, that's uh, not responsible, responsible. If you uh, take too little risk, probably you miss opportunities. So it's, you have to find the right balance there. The A is for approach, that you work together, that you prepare well, that you make use of knowledge available, and the L stands for lessons learned, that you learn something, are you willing to share those lessons learned with other people? And when something is not really working out the way you're hoping for, then the question is always, oh, I feel so ashamed, or I feel so bad, and maybe it's worthwhile to go through these uh, five letters. And I went through these five letters for Kia. You can already see uh, and predict what the outcome will be. Can you uh, please check? Uh, yeah, and, uh, 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 yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, next one, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, but if you score high on all these five factors, be proud and, 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 and be very positive uh, against other people uh, and, and applaud them. Now, I was talking about this learning aspect, I talked about uh, patterns. I give you one example how we come to these patterns, because we derived yesterday 16 patterns for failing. And in every failure I've seen, I recognize one or more of these patterns. So I will discuss one uh, and, and I'll show it to you. Can I go to the next slide? And that's about this bridge in Honduras. Honduras has been hit by the hurricane Mitch in 1998. And uh, the whole area, the whole low area, low uh, laying area was flooded. And when the water finally went back, it turned out that the riverbed moved 400 meters. Uh, which is a pity, uh, the bridge is still there, but it's no longer over the water, but next to the water. These things happen, you know. I have a couple of children at home, they, I have an argument, I solve it five minutes late about something else. Look at, uh, at, at, at the vaccinations. Uh, well, this group has to be first, okay, but then other people probably have to move backwards. So you always have to think about when I solve a problem, do I not introduce a problem at another place and another for other people? And, and, and that is something you can see maybe up front. Can you go to the next one? So we call this pattern the bridge of Honduras. And if you have all these patterns in your head, then you have build up intelligence. Then you can also, when you start something, already think about, hey, but what kind of patterns could be uh, playing a role in my situation? And what did I learn from the past to prevent or to deal with these uh, patterns? Okay, go to the next one. So we, we did, at the end of the day, uh, like I said, uh, of course you can well. uh, we came up with uh, 16 of these patterns. Here they show up. Uh, and uh, these, all these patterns you will recognize, if you want, you can find them on our website, brainfails.com. Now the call back, please. Um, you know. Well, it has to go back. We are in control. <laughs> Not in control about that. Okay, so uh, what you see, so the idea is that on the individual team, organizational, and system level, you can deal with these patterns. Uh, here they are, and and like I said, in every single failure I've seen, we have seen one or more of these patterns. I have absolutely no time to go through all of them, but just a, a few of them. The junk. The junk is about people who go on with a project too long, even when they know that it will not be a success. 
And I work with many organizations, large organizations, and I ask project teams, hey, you, uh, you know, your project was not so successful, but you stick very long to it. You keep, kept on working on it. Why did you do that? Yeah, yeah, we still had budget. Okay, yeah, that type of answers. Uh, the dive of Acapulco, these are people who dive in water that uh, is, has waves go up and down, and they wait up and down for 30, 40 minutes before they start diving, because if they dive too early or too late, they will have terrible headaches. Yeah? Uh, so you see, timing in this innovation is extremely important. It's, 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 it's important here. Too late is not good. Too early is not in time. And, and, and the empty spot means that you have uh, important stakeholders that are not represented. Uh, and, and so we have a lot of uh, uh, examples. You see the Bridge of Honduras. Uh, the canyon is about uh, rivers that go through uh, uh, canyons to the sea and they create patterns. And the patterns become deeper and deeper. And, uh, from a certain day, the rivers don't know that there might be another way to get to the sea. And the same happened to people. Uh, we call this learning. Uh, you are conditioned to learn something, and the more you have learned something, the more difficult it becomes to, to do something else. You see this also in organizations, not in your organizations, but other organizations. That's where we call these things, procedures, protocols, guidelines, best practices, the way we've always done it. But it's always based on the past. And now you come with something that's meant to be something for today or for the future. Microfit. Next one, please. So when you have all these patterns in your head, uh, you start up, uh, that's intelligence. And then you see in, in, in certain uh, uh, context, and, and I will not go into detail about this, uh, this squirrel, but that is one of our, my famous examples of failures. And then you are able, next one, to connect one or, or more of these uh, patterns to this situation. And then you say, okay, I have to do something, I, I understand what happened. Now, now you have a little bit of an idea about the uh, uh, Um Yeah. Uh, we, we also bring this, all these examples together in, in, in a system. So we have a tool that now contains more than uh, 150 uh, projects, which has a different uh, outcome than anticipated. Uh, and, and from each of these projects, we, we analyze what actually is happening. And I think the next one. Uh, and we also hand out prizes, prizes for the most brilliant failure in, the, uh, in various areas, like in uh, development aid, where people also do a lot of work in complex situations and do not want to talk about things that went wrong, which is stupid because we need to know what went wrong and we want to learn from it. But that they are afraid that if they tell about the failed project, they won't get any uh, financial support anymore. Also in healthcare, this is in healthcare, uh, we hand out prizes and, and then we're really looking for great people with great projects that uh, yeah, had a different outcome than anticipated. And a failure is not necessarily meant to be something that is hopelessly wrong. It is something that had very strong learning experiences. And a brilliant failure is something that people, actually it's a success. A brilliant failure is a success because what came out was very important in terms of learnings. And uh, it has been agreed that uh, by this viral formula, that the vision of these people and the, the, uh, yeah, the inspiration was extremely high. And that means that all these people are very happy to receive this prize because it's, it's a really a prize for achievement and not an, a prize for yeah, something you have to be uh, 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 yeah, more or less be ashamed of. Now, uh, like I said, uh, I work for Amy Amro Bank. I met uh, the founder of Key in 2004-2005, and Amy Amro was extremely interested in, in Key because it could solve quite a lot of uh, issues that we have in when people want to do business together and uh, do this with, uh, more, uh, with, with keeping the, the, the privacy being in control. So uh, at Amy Amro, we, we, uh, we heavily supported also the development of the Key Trust uh, Framework. Uh, and, and I think uh, uh, we, uh, we are still very proud on, on what came out of that framework because every time we see discussions wherever in, in the world, in, in newspapers, on conferences, in, uh, in politics, we always see that the outcome of this discussion is, uh, about privacy and data is always compliant with what has been designed in the key trust framework. Does not really mean that the framework is always being applied. That, that's more or less the failure. But what I can tell you, I have never seen anything that was in conflict with the principles of key. Of key. So that's, uh, uh, and, and Amy Amro yeah, was very happy to be part of that. And, and, and uh, it was really something that fit very nicely in the philosophy of the Dialogue House. Can you go next one? 
uh, and, and uh, so this is what we wanted to achieve. And, and, and actually, in a way, you do business, uh, you have a couple of roles and a couple of positions in any transaction you make. And AML was very, very uh, uh, enthusiastic about the way P looked at this, because from ev in every single uh, uh, part of this uh, scheme, we understood now what privacy really means, but we also understood that, uh, yeah, we need large organizations to make it work. And with that, uh, in that sense, I agree with the person who was speaking from uh, via Zoom. At the end of the day, for the implementation and the scale up, of course, you need big organizations. But I, uh, it was absolutely clear that this is something that conceptually could, uh, is, is okay. Can you go to the next one? Uh, so AMM was also looking at this at this position. Can go to the next one. Uh, and, and, and actually, uh, it, it's, it's funny uh, how how long already this this thinking has been developing. I, like I said, the, the, the seeds were planted already in 2004 or five, and then uh, in, 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 uh, we had this very nice uh, idea on how this would develop. And that's where things did not work, because at the end of the day. Uh, the practice is, uh, is, is, is difficult, it's always difficult. Uh, we call this, by the way, we call this the last mile. You can have very great concepts, and, uh, but at the end of the day, it's about implementation. It's about implementation, and for implementation, always dependent on many other uh, people and organizations. Uh, and we use very strange words for the, uh, things like implementation, like rollout, uh, like you're working with the carpet. Uh, uh, but at the end of the day here, it became very clear that uh, th this is the challenge. So it's not the ideas, or it's the absorptive capacity of society to, to onboard this, uh, these, these concepts and to really implement and embed it in, the, in our way of working. Next one, please. Yeah, 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 I'm, 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 I'm finished. Uh, and, but, but there was a lot of uh, uh, enthusiasm for uh, enthusiasm for, for key, uh, many big parties uh, went on. But at the end of the day, uh, we have to, had to conclude yeah, it, it, the way it, it developed was not really what, we, uh, what was the intention. And that's why we invited from the Institute of Brilliant Failures a key to no, be nominated as one of the most brilliant failures in, uh, in, in 2021, uh, 20, uh, 2020, because everyone agreed that if you go through the fire reform of the vision, the inspiration, uh, the approach, the lessons learned, this is a great example. And uh, we are very happy that uh, Art, who is also here in the room, uh, on behalf of the Key Foundation, uh, agreed to do this. Uh, and and, and uh, so you see on our website uh, what they want, uh, what the intention was, what the approach was, and most of all, what the lessons learned were. Where. And we could uh, link them to the archetypes, things like being too early. Uh, things like uh, in general without an army, which means great ideas, but at the end of the day, yeah, uh, not enough resources. Uh, it's, but most important, that's uh, where I finish off with, it's the post-it. Post-it means you want to find something, but at the end of the day, you find something maybe even more important by coincidence, but that's because you're open for it. And this is one of the most beautiful aspects of it. the original idea and, and the concepts and, and the philosophy lives on. And, 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 and Art is here on behalf of the foundation. He takes care of, of that part. But there's also commercial value, of course, in this, this, this whole idea. And, 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 and that has been developed, can you go to the next one? Uh, in in uh, yeah, an, a new application uh, of, of Key, which is making use of loyalty cards where you can uh, also help your, your, the, the clubs you, are, uh, you want to support. It can be sports clubs, can be uh, cultural clubs, by buying, uh, with uh, certain uh, companies, and in the meantime, uh, based completely based on, on key uh, uh, trust principles, be very supportive for uh, these companies without selling or giving away unnecessary information about yourself, but just because of the fact that you like to support a, a certain uh, group or movement, you can do that by show, uh, showing that in your in your buying behavior by making use of the of Dapper, which is a project that came out of uh, key. And I like this very much because on the one hand, we see cultural and, and societal value being created because all these clubs are being supported. I can do that by still being in control of my data. And, and I think uh, yeah, what I like very much about is this flexibility and this entrepreneurial spirit. Okay, we have developed a lot of things. Uh, it did not work out the way we wanted. Uh, still, we believe in it and we, uh, we go on with it. But at the end of the day, we see new opportunities and we take them. Next one, please. Almost finished. Um, 
so you see you can can support any uh, uh, good purpose that you have in mind that is also related to your heart to your mindset that one um, now we, we publish uh, these these uh, uh, great stories also in in, in journals the Dutch journal uh, of uh, of brilliant failures uh, where people really want to be uh, they want to be part of this this booklet because everyone who is in the booklet later stated I only receive positive feedback, and that's correct because they had a great story. They create people with great projects. In going to the next one, we almost finished now. Uh, I want to finish up with this slide. Uh, people always ask me, "Okay, you only talk about failures. Can we not learn from successes?" And of course, you can learn from successes, but not when they were trivial. If it's a trivial thing that came uh, that leads to success, then probably the knowledge was already in there before. Uh, so when do you learn also from successes? is when it could have gone wrong. So from failure you can learn because it went wrong, from successes you learn because it could have gone wrong. But these are exactly the same moments. So you could say actually a failure is a missed success, the next one, and a success is a missed failure. So if you look from that perspective to successes, now you understand why they are so close together. In the one case it did go wrong, in the other case it could have gone wrong. And key, I think, is a great example of a couple of moments where it could have gone better and a couple of moments where it really went, wrong, uh, went right. And I think if you combine that, then you understand why I claim that key is a brilliant failure. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks a lot, Paul, for uh, uh, inspiring us this morning with this. I, I'd love to hear some questions or comments. Uh, um, do we have Do we have one or two comments? Then we need to go on with the workshops. Isabel, go ahead, please. Thank you, Thank you for a very uh, uh, impactful presentation. What would you have done differently with Key to actually make it a success? As a, or what would be the second attempt in a way of key? Yeah. Which is what we all want to learn. Yeah. Now, the second thing, that's uh, one of the things that they already took a second chance eh? they, because they, they changed uh, a little bit the, uh, yeah, the, 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 the strategy and they came up with new, this new, new concept like this uh, depot, which I think is a very great and very interesting move and also very important. So to some extent, they already took the second chance. And the other one, one uh, I, I listed these patterns of failing. Uh, and I think when you should, when you try a second chance with all of you who are in the same area with, uh, with struggling with the same um, uh, topics, well, first of all, learn from uh, experiences like those from key, but also from others. I mean, if, if you, uh, one of the uh, things that we came across was uh, principle timing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you all, uh, and, uh, and that was also related to this absorptive capacity. So always when you come up with a new concept and you have to implement it somewhere or you have to uh, show the, or yeah, you have to get other people on board, think about what is really on their mind. And I think in all honesty, if I look at the key, he was very much driven by the, by the great insights that he had and the strong ambition to create a better world. And they were talking to people who were not there yet. Mm -hmm. and so always try to at least, you know, of course you can be, Ahead of the rest. Yeah, but yeah, you can. It's, it's, it's very good to be ahead of the rest, but don't go that far away that they don't see you anymore. Just one question, then we need to we need we need to go on. Uh, I hear I have one uh, one there for Ian. Hi there. It's not a question. It's more a comment. And bear in mind, when I flew over from London to. Rotterdam and met Marcel in 2008. Lovely guy, fabulous product at the time. But my take on it would be, because I've had similar efforts in the UK, the timing was not right and technology wasn't right. And I think what's different now is the technology is now right. So all power to Marcel's elbow, but I think it was simpler than that. The technology was kind of quite closed and not ready to scale. So I think that's, yeah, just a comment. No, I it is an extremely rich story, which is, uh, and, and like you also uh, uh, confirm, it's driven by a, a good person with a, uh, with a very good view on, on uh, what the real problem is and how you could solve it. Uh, but indeed, the, the, the tools to solve it were not ready yet. 
and the climate was also not ready yet. And, and uh, yeah, that's something that, uh, yeah, now you, if, if you work on this type of project, A, you should have a lot of stamina, uh, and B, yeah, you should every now and then also uh, reflect on yourself, is this, uh, is this possible? Uh, and, and, uh, and, and what I like about the, the recent moves is that they, well, well, of course, the philosophy is still alive, and, and, and correctly so, but they also have to be a little bit more pragmatic and say, okay, uh, uh, I always say in, in, in theory, there is no difference between theory and practice, but in practice, there is difference between practice and theory. Uh, and if you understand that statement, then you know that every now and then, as, also as an entrepreneur, also as a social entrepreneur, you have to be uh, flexible. And I think that's, that's very important lesson learned here as well. Uh, thanks, Paul. Wonderful that you closed with that Yogi Berra quote that, uh, that uh, should be appreciated by, uh, by, by everybody. Uh, we need to go on uh, uh, to the workshops uh, to stick with the schedule. Um, Paul, I hope you're around uh, for, for at least a little bit, uh, um, perhaps, or maybe if you're busy and on your way, we connect with you, uh, with you online. Uh, and let's, uh, let's have one round of uh, applause and thanks to Paul.